What's up, y'all? So, Gwyneth Paltrow has been in the news for a couple of things. I'm going to take it back a little bit and talk briefly about her interview that went viral and talk about the wellness industry and how I think there is an illusion of wellness that is really sometimes just a cover up for an eating disorder. If you don't know, Gwyneth Paltrow was on the Art of Being Well podcast where they're like, and they ask her, what's your wellness routine? What's your wellness routine look like now? I eat dinner early in the evening. I do a nice intermittent fast. I usually eat something about 12. Mm -hmm. um, and in the morning, I'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar, right? So I, I have coffee, but I really like soup for lunch. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. I try to do one hour of movement. So I'll either take a walk or I'll do Pilates or I'll do my Tracy Anderson. And then I get in the sauna, I dry brush and I get in the sauna. So I do my infrared sauna for 30 minutes. And then for dinner, I try to eat, you know, according to paleo. So lots of vegetables. It's really important for me to support my detox. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest here. When I first saw the clip, I didn't really see anything wrong with it. I noticed that a lot of people were angry, but I was like, oh, like, okay, that's what she eats. She didn't specify what she eats for dinner. She just said she eats paleo. And I'm guessing she eats more than bone broth every day. That was my assumption. Maybe I'm being naive or something. If that's all she eats, yeah, that's not enough food. But I personally wasn't triggered by this. And so many people were like, oh, she looks tired. She looks weak and haggard and old. And I'm like, damn, like, is that really how we're going to talk to this woman? Like, what if she's actually eating way more in a day and she has a perfectly healthy diet and people are just telling her she looks old as shit? Like, that's not very nice. And if she does need help, we shouldn't be insulting her. And a lot of people are concerned that she is promoting eating disorders and an unhealthy diet that could potentially be harmful to other people. A lot of people were describing her as like the ultimate almond mom or like the almond mom final boss. And Gwyneth Paltrow, her whole brand is wellness. I mean, she has a literal wellness brand called Goop where you can buy pussy flavored candles and hundred dollar eye creams and shit. so this is her thing. I think I just said pussy flavored candle. I meant to say pussy scent, pussy scented. Um, imagine if she if she sold pussy flavored candles or like pussy flavored chapstick. Imagine what that would taste like. Anyway, she's got this whole f wellness brand, and I think this interview was meant to promote that. I also think that this was uh, preemptive measures to her court case that she's currently in. She busted somebody's ass on the ski slopes, I, and you know now they're trying to sue her ass for like three hundred thousand dollars. Well, I lost half a day of skiing. But yeah, the Almond Mom thing is very interesting because they're kind of leading you to believe that they live this healthy lifestyle, they care about health and fitness, but in reality, it represents a very unhealthy relationship with the body and with food and exercise. So according to a CBS article, it describes an almond mom as a mom who pushes toxic dieting, like suggesting that their child eat one almond when they feel hungry. But many people use this term to describe Yolanda Hadid's actions in a 2012 episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> almonds chew them really well because your your stomach is not yeah. I'm so excited for the food pretty much all the food that we're eating is like a heart attack and then you got to get back on your diet though I was actually really good this week yeah in another article by Teen Vogue, a therapist who specializes in eating disorders says, being raised in a diet culture increases the likelihood of developing disordered eating later in life. You may struggle to understand your body's natural cues for food, rest, exercise, etc., and ultimately learn that your body isn't a trustworthy resource. Almond moms set their children up to be obsessed with food and their bodies in a way that is toxic and extremely harmful. My interpretation of almond moms is also like those like crunchy granola moms who only eat organic produce and anything else is considered poison and they would rather like feed their child battery acid than take them to McDonald's. Can you imagine like one of Gwyneth Paltrow's kids eating like a hot Cheeto or something? I'm pretty sure they would just simply combust on the spot. I would 
love to see Gwyneth Paltrow chug a Four loco and to see what happens. That could honestly be detrimental to her health. I don't think she would come out on the other side. I feel like the black version of this would be the Shea Butter Mom. Do y'all know, y'all know what, what I'm talking about. All the black people know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna put a series of pictures on the screen and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. On a more serious note, I do think that mothers tend to contribute to their daughter's eating disorders. I mean, I feel like as women, we pass down eating disorders like family heirlooms. It's just so hard to escape because we're constantly being bombarded with diet culture and these standards of beauty and how our body should look, especially back in the 80s or 90s. Like, our moms really had it the worst because that was like the peak of like, you know, the thin heroin chic super skinny look like everybody wanted to be super skinny and you know now the language around weight loss and body image has really changed and i think in a very positive way of course we still deal with diet culture but it's a lot better now than it was before and i think we're we're pretty lucky for that and i'm glad that this generation has changed those norms because i mean back in the day bitches was popping speed like literal speed just going to cvs or whatever drugstore and buying diet pills and taking them like they was jolly ranchers like that was the norm i've tried fad diets powders pills still my weight's been up and down like a yo-yo until the aids plan taught me how to take off weight and help keep it off AIDS may taste like a candy, but AIDS contains one of the most effective appetite suppressants you can buy. And there's no stimulant in AIDS that could make you nervous. With AIDS, I ate less, so the weight came off. To help keep it off when I sometimes want things loaded with calories, AIDS helps put me in control. The AIDS plan can teach you how to take off weight and help keep it off. Try new peanut butter AIDS. But I think as women, as a generation, we need to, like stop the pattern we need to break the generational curses and stop giving our children eating disorders because it's just it, it, it starts in the home okay it starts in the home and you know maybe now like our diet pills are now probiotic pills that influencers sell on instagram and tiktok um obviously that's not the same thing probiotics are actually good for you but i do think that the wellness industry in a way has been repackaged as diet culture but we have this like, okay, I kind of lost my train of thought here. But what I meant to say is that wellness culture has kind of this green idolistic veil over it that sometimes is just covering up a, a darker intention behind certain wellness trends or behaviors. Do you really want to heal your gut microbiome or do you just want a flat stomach and hate your body? Are you actually intermittent fasting or are you just using that as a cover up for starving yourself? You know? First, I just want to say that as Americans, I think we have a very poor relationship with our health and wellness simply because we just don't know. Like, we're kind of taught health in school, but not in a way that really teaches us how to live a balanced and healthy lifestyle. And I think a lot of us are kind of left to our own devices and it turns into the blind leading the blind. And we're left vulnerable to all of these health and wellness trends because we want to be healthy, we want to take care of our bodies, but in a country where they feed us little garbage, it's hard. Like, half the shit that we put into our bodies isn't even legal in other countries. Like, that should tell you something. You know, when we try to get information on, on some of the health studies and the environmental studies from federal agencies, we get back page after page of blacked out information because the company claimed confidential business information. Consumers have no idea what is in the products that they consume. So how sick something makes me and how bad it pollutes the environment these companies really have a vested interest in making sure that the public doesn't have information about their effects and what risks are really posed to consuming them. We are allowed to consume so much crap that we honestly probably don't even know about most of the time. There's so many preservatives and added sugars and everything. There is added sugar in everything. It's so hard to avoid. And so it's so much easier to be overweight in the States. And it, because of that, I think we have this intense fear of obesity and fatness. Like, it is something that these almond moms really fear. And of course, I think we should all be held accountable for our own health and we're all responsible for taking care of the bodies that we were given. But the government also needs to step the fuck up and give us the tools to do so and not just let us eat like pigs at a trough. Like, I really believe that because of our privatized healthcare system, they are just pumping our shit with anything because the sicker we are, the more money they make. Actually, I understand that Dr. 
said that you could film here today, but unfortunately that's not going to be able to happen. Um, I know that he advocates for patients changing their diets, but the hospital makes money off these surgeries and the reality is he does too. So uh, we can't do anything that's going to negatively impact the hospital. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to film here today. Every five years, the U.S. Department of Agriculture creates dietary guidelines for Americans. The committee who writes these guidelines has been made up of individuals who have received money from McDonald's, the National Dairy Council, the American Meat Institute, the National Dairy Board, the National Livestock and Meat Board, the American Egg Board, Dannon, Candy and Sugar Companies, Coca-Cola, and Anheuser, just to name a few. Whereas, you know, in the U.K., they literally have a sugar tax. Like, if you go to McDonald's and you, like, order, um, like, a soda on the, like, touchscreen machine, they're going to push diet sodas onto you because they want their citizens to eat less sugar because if they're sick, if they've got diabetes or if they've got whatever ailments, that's money out of their pockets because they have free health care over there. So they're more incentivized to take care of their people's health. Whereas in the US, it's the complete opposite. They make money off this shit. And so with all of this fear of obesity and also just like this intense fixation on health, I think that's why we are susceptible to falling into these wellness trends and, and fad diets and all that stuff. There's a lot of information out there, which is great, but there's also a lot of misinformation. And I think we're led to be confused a lot of the times because we aren't really sure what's true and what isn't. Like, I think that's why there's always a debate over like various milks every three months. So oh, this milk causes cancer, this milk This milk will make you grow an 11th cho. This milk causes suffering. This milk contains substances that's found in bombs. There's just, we don't know the truth ever. And it seems like there's always a debate over various health trends like healing the gut microbiome or intermittent fasting or what greens to eat. You know, arugula is better than kale and like don't eat iceberg lettuce. Which diet is better? Paleo diet? The vegan diet? Keto? It's just like, ah! And I think it's so overwhelming. It gets to a point where some people just straight up give up and they don't care anymore because they're like, I'm tired. There's nothing left for me. And I think all of these things result in orthorexia sometimes. This obsession with eating clean is is an eating disorder. It can be an eating disorder. Because if you're, I mean, just like eating only Doritos and Twinkies every day isn't a healthy and balanced diet, only eating bone broth and kale is not a healthy and balanced diet either. Moderation, I think, should be taught more when it comes to health. Like, 80-20, you know? Eat 80% good, 20%, eat whatever you want. It's not a big deal. Because if you're only eating pure, clean foods all the time, I, I think that will influence you to binge more often. And if you're restricting a lot, it's just going to really create a toxic relationship with food. And that's not healthy. Gwyneth Paltrow talked about intermittent fasting briefly in her interview. And I, I've had a lot of thoughts about it. So I kind of want to talk about that for a minute. So for those of you who don't know, intermittent fasting is any of the various meal timing schedules that cycle between voluntary fasting and non-fasting over a given period. Methods of intermittent fasting include alternate day fasting, periodic fasting, and daily time restricted feeding. The most common method being the 16-8 method where you fast for 16 hours and eat for an eight hour feeding window, typically between 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. So intermittent fasting is very popular for those who are looking to lose weight, but it also has other benefits like improving heart health, tissue health, thinking and memory, and physical performance. This is a pretty controversial health trend because I think a lot of people just hear starvation, restriction, anorexia whenever someone says intermittent fasting and yeah i guess to you know the, the untrained eye or whatever you would think oh yeah like you're not eating breakfast you must be anorexic bitch and that's not necessarily the case i think there are plenty of people who can intermittent fast in a healthy way and it doesn't affect them negatively but sometimes people get carried away with it and you know those who are more prone to eating disorders Maybe intermittent fasting is not for them. There's also been a debate on whether women should be intermittent fasting since we don't run on a 24 hour cycle, but a monthly menstrual cycle. So intermittent fasting could negatively affect the hormones of a woman if she does this. I've been really on my health shit recently and I've lost weight. Well, actually I haven't lost weight. I weigh the exact same, but my body composition is different. And one of my friends, I mean, she meant this in the kindest way and I totally understand where she was coming from but um she was like are you good <laughs> and I was like yeah I'm fucking great like I feel amazing but you know I have lost fat on my body but I've been gaining muscle too and so I feel like whenever a woman 
loses weight or wants to lose weight, they always automatically assume, oh, she's got an eating disorder. Someone call the eating disorder hotline, put her away. And it's just like, okay, like it's, it's not, it, it's not that deep. I, most people don't have an eating disorder. And I think we should also stop policing women's bodies and what they do and what they eat. Like having concern is fine, but at the end of the day, like, you should just let women do what they want to do. Because, you know, if it was a guy, no one would really care. It'd be like, oh, good for you, man, hitting the gym, you know, losing weight, losing fat, whatever. Like, and not, that's not to say guys don't have eating disorders, because they definitely do. But I feel like there's such a, like, double standard with health and wellness when it comes to women. Um, I, I think, especially with this Gwyneth Paltrow thing, people are so quick to point fingers at her and be like, oh, you're promoting toxic diet culture. And instead of being like, are, are you okay? Like my friend, they're like, oh, f- like, fuck you for doing that. Like you're, you're a terrible celebrity. You're using your platform for evil. And it's like, well, if she does need help, like maybe meeting her with empathy would be more effective. Also, can we just stop taking health advice from celebrities? Like, I know she has a platform and she's influencing people with what she says, but as a whole, as a collective, I think we need to put less weight into what these celebrities say and listen to doctors instead of actresses when it comes to health and diet. But I will say this though, the detoxing stuff I think is definitely bullshit. You know, she's got this fucking IV drip and she talks about detoxifying and all this stuff. As we're recording this right now, you have a little IV, so which is so on brand for both of us. <laughs> I'm really embarrassing myself right here. <laughs> Early IV adopter, glutathione, I, I love to have in an IV, kind of a random, more fringy one, phosphatidylcholine, that's my favorite IV when I can find them. They're quite hard to find yeah. and those make me feel so good. But this today, just because I was flying, I have just a bag of good old fashioned vitamins listen if you really want to detoxify your body i have one no i have two i guess three things for you kidney and the liver now i don't know if you guys have heard of this um i feel like it's pretty underground not a lot of people have heard about it yet i think it's going to be a really big trend in the wellness industry in a few months um the best thing about the kidney and the liver is that you actually already have one like you can just find one around your house it, it comes with the body that you were born with actually so everyone's got one um and if you don't totally fine the black market sells a whole bunch of them they're like always in stock link in my bio use my code madison black market for 20 percent off your first order all these bitches are talking about oh here's how to heal your guttural microbial megadome i don't know what that even means like still i'm like okay i'm interested in healing my gut or whatever the fuck but then i'm like what am i doing i don't know all i do is eat kimchi and drink kombucha and call it a day bitch that's all i got and I feel like if you have a balanced diet, you're probably good. And like I said in my last video about Pilates, I really think a lot of this wellness shit is just to sell you stuff. It's not about inspiring you to live a healthier, better lifestyle. Although I talk all about that on my second channel because I have a vlog channel and I talk about productivity and discipline and how I love to work out. So if you want to check that out, you know, click the link. But yeah, it's just like the pink Pilates princess, the clean girl, the whatever the fuck bitch. It's all just to sell you things and... You know, I'm an influencer, so I get it. I try to sell you stuff all the time. So I'm not like against it, but don't let people trick you into believing that you have to do these specific things in order to be a healthy person. Like you're never gonna be the pinnacle of health. I mean, I guess you could be, um, I guess, I don't know, like Andrew Huberman is probably the pinnacle of health, but as long as you're, you know, eating your protein, fats, carbs, whatnot, getting enough sleep, drinking water, moving your body like 30 minutes a day, seeing the sun, maintaining healthy relationships, I think that's good. And you know, just because you're a vegan or because you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, it doesn't mean that you're like the pinnacle of health and i don't think that's even the goal i think it's just to have a ba balanced healthy life so your body works well your mind works well and you can feel comfortable in your body and live your life without any complications i forgot to mention that i think sometimes there's a lot of morality tied to health like if you do certain things and you are automatically a better person a holier person more worthy in a way there's a lot of guilt and shame tied to health wellness and food sometimes and i think motivators for changing your diet or losing weight can be rooted in self-hatred when it really doesn't have to be and i think that's where people get misguided because they do it out of self-hatred or because you know they think that they're like 
not a good person or something. I mean, I think taking care of your health will make you feel better mentally and it makes you a better person for yourself. But just because you eat McDonald's fries on a night out, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you've lost all discipline or should lose all self-respect. You'll be good. What's that saying? Cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, that's not always true. <laughs> if any of that resonated with you, let me know in the comments. And if you guys have an almonds mom, let me know. Let me know your experience. I would, I would love to hear what y'all have to say about that. If you would like to support this channel, please check out my Patreon where you can get content early. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! You couldn't let me be.